We'll be continuing along the path of harmlessness that we are on already for a few sessions. And it's three aspects according to the Tibetan master. Perfect poise, a completed point of view, and divine understanding. So in previous sessions, we have practiced standing in perfect poise. And we explored, we began to explore the place or the state of consciousness from which we do this work, which we called the stool of the director or the conscious self. So today we will go a step further and we will have a look into what does it mean to form a completed point of view. We all know how complex it is to reach a completed point of view about our own life, personal life. So how much more complex it is to reach a completed point of view about a collective. It's taking time and it takes a group to do it. It's an ongoing project. It's not something that, uh, that can be finished. At least in, on our level of consciousness, it uh, actually can only be a, approximated. So let's start by reflecting on this phrase, a completed point of view. It has actually three aspects, it has a view and a point from which to have this view and then a process of completion, of making it round. So it all starts with a view, with having a look with our perception. And we all have naturally many different receptors or antennas, physical ones, etheric ones, astral and mental ones. And through all of them, we receive information constantly. And this happens automatically. It's an unconscious process. And then also we interpret this input, we give it a meaning according to our background. And this interpretation then naturally, automatically becomes our opinion. So also this forming of an opinion is at the beginning until a certain level of consciousness, it's an unconscious process, automatic process. And this happens, this is so until we transform it intentionally into a conscious one. And until this happens, we all know that we can be easily influenced, manipulated, um, yeah. So only when we reach a certain level of development, when the mind starts to think its own thoughts, when we reach the capacity for self-reflection also, then it is that we start to disidentify from these automatic perceptions and reactions. And then we start to become able to use them at will. So this process of automatic perception becoming conscious observation. Let's take this in for a moment, automatic perception. And we transform it into conscious observation. So 
So we reach some certain level of control over our receptors and also over this process of formulating an opinion, a point of view, which then becomes a more mental, deliberate, intentional affair. So all this is done from the stool of the director. And perhaps it's good to go back to this a bit. We have received many very deep sharings from some of you. Uh, explorations of this stool of the director. We are very grateful for all this richness. I just want to go over a few of the main points. This director is that part of the soul which is conscious of itself in incarnation, in the brain. Lucille Siddercrantz calls it the conscious soul incarnate. So this stool or this assemblage point of our consciousness, it is a midway point between the personality and the soul. It's situated at the highest point of the personality on the mental plane. And when we focus in our, in the center of our head, where the brain cavity is, that's the natural place where we can access um, this state of consciousness. It's the place where land, water and air meet, as uh, DK says. So it's a synthetic center from which we have access in all directions this 360 degrees view. We can look down into the personality and up to the soul and out into the surroundings. So this is literally our headquarters into which all the information from all our receptors and antennas feed. And it's here that it gets organized and synthesized into this approximate completed point of view. So when we are focused on that level of consciousness, then we, our point of view becomes more intentional and more complete, more and more inclusive. And then also from here, eventually this synthetic intent becomes then an integrated soul impulsed action. So it's here that we become discerning and one pointed. The conscious soul incarnate in action or as Asajoli calls it, more simply, the conscious self. Yeah, so this is a, um, a very um, foundational piece of technology in our personal and group and national work and in general in our work as spiritual servers. And of course, we will continue researching it. And uh, perhaps if you would like, then after the meditation, we can continue the sharing or find another way to, to continue this. It's already uh, ongoing via email. But okay, now let's go back to our nations. and uh, to our nation as a living entity. Yeah, as um, Asajoli calls it, this. It has a physical, emotional and mental body and a personality and a soul. And it also has a conscious self 
which is made up of what Asajoli calls the group of best citizens, which are all those citizens who can perceive the nation as a whole and then care for, for this nation, for the welfare of this nation from this inclusive perspective. And when we work from this state of consciousness in service to our nation, then we are part of this conscious self of our nation. Then we act as the conscious self of our nation. And this work requires a constant vigilance, a constant use of, of this muscle of disidentifying and discerning. As we all know, the subtle field of a collective is like a Kama Manasik soup. It's a great mix of etheric, emotional and mental dynamics. And we swim in this national soup, whether we are aware of it or not. And more so when we are not aware of it. So it's, it's uh, automatic and natural that our own etheric body responds to the etheric body of the nation and our feeling apparatus responds to the nation's emotional states and patterns. And our lower mind is impacted by the collective thought forms and any issues that are prevalent in the national mental body at any one time. So we can build we can build up a degree of resilience to this automatic impact precisely through this muscle of disidentifying and discerning through sharpening our awareness of what are our receptors doing how is it how are we impacted by the collective field so we come into this state of conscious observation that gives us a certain resilience. And um, also to be part of a, of a group of best citizens seems also actually indispensable for keeping a disidentified sense of self within the national life when we do this national work that exposes us to the national dynamics. Yeah, it's also a safeguard to be in such a group because in the exchange with our co-workers, we become aware how influenced our own perception is by our personal background and environment, how biased we are. And uh, when there is this honest exchange, we can round out each other's perspective and come to, to a more objectivity and freedom and of course also an expansion of our view and that goes on of course when when the exchange takes place between different national groups so our perspective becomes international so it helps us to loosen our national identification and stand even more free become more planetary in our outlook, shifting our identification more and more to the new group of world service, which, which will be when, it, when we will manage to function as a unit, as the new group, then we actually are the planetary conscious self the planetary steward. So we would like to continue experimenting with sharing snapshots of our various nations to help us enlarge and enrich our perspectives 
and practice this using our antennas in discernment. If you remember, two months ago we made a start with the Australian group. And today we will have another snapshot, this time from Germany, from the German Klangschale group. And after that, we will take our antennas into meditation. Just one more word on these snapshots. Um, the process of creating such national snapshots is actually mm, a practice towards forming a completed point of view of our nation. It's like a momentary synthesis of what we now perceive as a group, as we observe our nation as a living entity. So it's a momentary thing. And our perception will evolve over time. We will become more proficient, more nuanced and detailed, and more inclusive as we continue to practice. And uh, yeah, it's also a deep, very deep group learning because we each have our own angles. And um, yeah, a snapshot, to produce a snapshot requires a process of synthesizing these different angles, rounding them out. So we learn very much about ourselves and also about each other in this process. And it's not always easy, especially in times of turmoil and polarization in our nation. So perhaps in the next lab session, we can look into this aspect of the work. For now, uh, over to you, Annette, to share our current snapshot of Germany. Yes, thank you, Uta. <laughs> so let's try a snapshot of Germany. Yes, Germany is a midland. It lies in the heart of Europe. It was divided into East and West and then reunited. A seam and in some ways a scar till runs through the land. And this seam is also part of the European structure, like a heart with two chambers. There is a tension in the German psyche between the high ideal of serving as a connector and cultivating right relationship within its field of influence on the one side and standing in its own identity on the other. Still a reticence of asserting itself is lingering a fear of repeating the old misuse of its strength. This contributes to a certain passivity in the German nation, even a sense of stuckness. There is a tendency to obey, to go along and just continue to function. The Germans have a sense of duty and service to the common good, which can strengthen this passivity. Nature, the forest, the rivers are an essential anchor for Germany, connecting it to its deep roots. The Citizens' awareness of the value and functions of nature was lost for a while, but is now growing again and with a deeper consciousness.
we can perceive a dawning recognition of the need and possibility to, to destructure and dissolve images that Germany has had of itself since the World War. A cautious opening to transcend the fears and with new courage to give wings to its full creativity again. This is showing itself already through many diverse, diverse initiatives, breaking through to the surface in all areas of national life. We also perceive a softening in the German trade of harsh judging. More human warmth is starting to flow through its habitual, rational and factional nature, making it pliable for more nuanced interplay. Like everywhere in the world in the present crisis, we see also in Germany the manipulation of the free flow of communication. At the same time, in the background, we can sense a wrestling, a deep search for a new basis for real, open and authentic communication. And tender new seeds of it are already germinating. In this lies the spark of a growing awareness of Germany, Germany, Germany's task. And even if it cannot yet be clearly understood, it is already shining through. The Midland position, the bridging and connecting function of sensed is sensed. Still a lot can be worked through. The achievements of the past, like for example, Germany's contribution to beauty and its dignified and advanced constitution and its sense of justice and right relations must be dusted, appreciated and renewed. This is a basis for advancing towards its fulfillment for itself and its contribution to Europe and the world. Essential soul qualities that can be recognized and further achieved are freedom, a higher order, and dynamic harmony, which can contain diversity and create connection. Thank you all. Over to you, Uta. Yeah. Thanks, Annette. Giving us a snapshot into Germany. 